behind the scenes day in the life of Rick, DJ Rick Webb running four companies. I haven't updated anybody on the house, but the house siding came along. Just, eh, you know, just like sharing life updates. The siding looks Amazing. Yeah, we did a vinyl and they just went over the Mace Knight siding that was on there and it turned out amazing. We had so much raw on the side of this house. But anyways, uh, jumping in the truck and we're gonna head to the office for today. Well, actually, no, we're gonna go pick up a 50 foot boom lift to tie behind this. Then we're gonna go to the office, meet the GHL boys. Then we're gonna go tear down a 50 foot tree with a star on top. Then we're gonna go back to the office, do some shit there, get prepared to go set up the wedding show and rehearsal for this evening. That'll be pretty much the day. And then tomorrow is the wedding show. So come along for a fun adventure behind the day in the life of uh, my life currently. It's changed quite a bit. And by changed a lot, I mean like literally less than two years ago, I was a DJ and a full-time engineer trying to grow a DJ company. And in the span of two years, gone from basically being just the DJ company to four companies. We have the DJ company, we have Greensboro Holiday Lights, we have Greensboro Home Services, and and we have both lighting USA. When you talk about managing a lot of moving parts, it all comes down to employees and thankfully I have a good amount of awesome solid employees. Here in the beginning of the video though, I wanted to uh, quickly go over a big announcement. So Midwest DJs Live. Yes, Midwest DJs Live. I believe it is April 28th through the 30th or 31st, something like that, 29, 30s. Yeah, April 28th through the 30th, I believe. In Milwaukee, Wisconsin, I'll put the details down below, but we are gonna be there. I'm gonna be there. Both Lighting USA is gonna be there. We're gonna have a booth. We're gonna be doing uh, lighting for the nightlife events. It's going to be insane. I'm super excited. So if you guys wanna come join us in Milwaukee, Wisconsin for the Midwest DJs Live, links down below for tickets and all that. This is definitely more of an educational heavy conference. Definitely not a big gear conference. I think will be one of the biggest vendors there. There'll be probably a good handful of vendors, maybe like 10 or so. It's a smaller conference, but it's still big. It's like probably the second biggest conference that's left. I've never been to it personally, but I have heard very, very good things from a lot of my industry uh, professionals that this is one of the best educational ones you can go to. So I wanted to go to it for the education, but uh, ended up working out a sponsorship deal for us to have both Light USA there. We probably are gonna have inventory for sale there as well on discount. Just a little wink wink. Midwest DJs Live, link down below. We're also gonna probably be doing, it's kinda under ups right now, but uh, we're gonna be doing something with the DJ Life podcast there. More to come on that. We round back, got the lift. We go inside, see what the boys are up to. Day in the life of yeah. GHL. G G G H L. <laughs> <laughs> the sad part is there's still so much down on the ground here to put away. We'll get around to doing this later, but we got the new RCF NLX 24 MK2 speakers that just came in. When I get back, we're gonna have to do a little cleanup and get ready for the wedding show. This is our like little makeshift DJ setup. Always live, always running. I'm gonna go grab an energy drink though. No one's in the office today. Hannah and Marcellus have the day off. Well, they're gonna be joining us later tonight, but uh, this is our demo right now. If you saw in the last video, we went through and we demoed all this. Well, the boys demoed a lot of it. I helped too, but uh, just gotta get the ceiling put back together, paint the ceiling. Uh, we gotta do some drywall touch up. We got some new flooring already picked out that's gonna go throughout the whole thing. Do like a wood vinyl plank. And then we're gonna put a couple TVs on the wall, make this a nice little hangout area. We're gonna get, uh, like some shelving and stuff over here. You know, like a, a butcher block table or something. It's exciting, but. Let's see, in the fridge, Celsius. All of my OG followers, sadly, no longer on the bang. It's just too hard to get in, too expensive at this point. I can get Celsius at Costco in giant packs and it's it's a little less on the caffeine, but I, I drink one and a half a day or I try to hold myself to one so I can reduce my caffeine intake, but we're gonna grab our stuff and get going. The van be looking nice. I need to get some black rims on there. On site, on location, whoa. That's cool, it's got a level. Guys are working on tearing down the bottom layer of this tree. Can't even see, but up there's a star. Um, I'm about to get this thing into position, get all the legs out. This is what a 50 foot boom arm looks like, genie boom arm, if you guys have never seen one before. But basically these legs will fold down and then we'll basically be able to take the bucket all the way up and be all the way up on top. Well, welcome to the top. Welcome to the top. So uh, we actually have this pipe installed here. I don't know if you can see it, but this like star just slides right over it. Now for all you in the comments right now related to safety, 
I am the owner, therefore I'm not on a harness. Does that void my insurance? Yes. Also, I don't really see the need for a harness because this thing falls down, like I'm done. But it's, it's got a nice cage. We're about 40 feet in the air right now. So yeah, we're taking all the lights off it. So that's what we're gonna do now. What's up, boys? We'll advise that this 50 foot boom lift is not for the weak. I'm slightly scared of heights. This thing terrifies me, but I've used it about eight times now. Part one of the day complete. The guys just left in the van. They're gonna go get some lunch and uh, gotta get one of the brake lights replaced on the on the van. It's out, but I'm gonna go drop this back off and then head back to the warehouse, so. Let's go. For y'all wondering how financially this all works, basically renting that 50 foot boom lift. Typically we get it for the weekend. So like we'll get it on Friday and we have to return it on Monday. And that normally runs us between 500 to $600, depending on the rate that they're running us. Today, four hour rental, it was only 400 bucks. It's not much of a discount in comparison to get it that's for the whole right. weekend, but literally that's all we needed it for today was that one tree. So that's how much it costs and that gets factored into the price for what we charge to do that tree right there, which uh, as you guys can imagine is uh, a few thousand dollars <laughs> for that tree when we have to rent it to put it up and rent it to put it down or take it down. In other life updates for you guys that didn't catch the last video or catch Nick's live stream where he mentioned it, my wedding is coming up here in this month, literally February 24th of 2024 it will be my wedding. The homie Nick Spinelli is coming to be the DJ for the night. Uh, we're going to be vlogging it from two perspectives. So Hannah, who runs my fusion side, is one of the bridesmaids. She's going to be vlogging from Christine's side, my wife-to-be. And then Marcellus, as you guys know, he's going to be vlogging from my side. Don't worry. You guys are going to get to see all the behind the scenes and see the whole full setup for uh, my personal wedding, which I'll be honest, a lot of people have been asking me about it. And they're like, are you going like crazy with the setup and everything? And we're really not. Um, it's going to be basically a traditional kind of big DJ set. Setup, but the venue doesn't allow cold sparks or dancing on the cloud. So it's literally just going to be a lot of up lights, a pair of movers, the furniture, of course. And then we're doing some ceiling design stuff and some pipe and drape for some changes and stuff. That's about the majority of it, but it's going to be exciting. I'm excited. I'll catch you up to you guys when I get back to the office after I drop off this lift at the rental place. Also for context, that tree literally took from start to finish a little less than an hour to take down. Pretty quick and easy. It's been three hours or so. Really just been kind of working on organizing as best I can around the office. Got the brand new RCF NLX 24 MK2 edition unboxed. These things are beefy, man. I was surprised how heavy they are. These things about to scream. But yeah, trying to start piling up everything. I gotta get the covers on those. Our Maui 28s over here, the G3s. Got those all packed up. We're doing a corporate audio event tomorrow and monograms. And then we also have our wedding show that we're gonna go set up today as well. So trying to get everything kind of laid out. I'm actually not normally the person that goes through and gets things ready to go, but Marcel's and Hannah went to a concert last night. So they basically were out of the office yesterday, which is normally gear prep day. Today's Friday. So I'm going to go ahead and do it for them because they're, they went to a concert all the way down Charlotte and uh, they tie it. So I'm going to work on getting this all ready to go. And then uh, this is all going to go in the trailer. This will all go in Marcel's truck or he'll take the van. Not entirely sure yet. And then we got a wedding on Sunday that Jordan's doing. That's a whole nother concept that's new to me is how busy we are on a week to week basis right now. It's like we're always doing two to three, maybe six, seven events in a week and it's it's busy. It's fun. I like it. All right. It's funny. Everyone showed up. So we got everybody's cars are here now. Um, yeah, I need to get the trailer. I'm going to go grab the trailer that's around back. It stays here nowadays. It doesn't come to my house anymore. So I need to go grab the trailer, get the stuff loaded up for the wedding show. Marcellus just came and grabbed all of the stuff for his audio event. He's gonna go set that up and yeah, kind of up there right now. Not sure what else to tell you guys right now other than grabbing the trailer. See there's good old Marcellus in his truckity truck. Got all of his stuff. See, we got our trailer there, and then our neighbor's trailers and our van. I'll give you guys some trailer pro tips if you're leaving it in an open area like this. Make sure you get yourself a nice hitch lock. This right here, it's like a proven lock one. This thing, it's worth every dollar because ain't nobody gonna cut that off. Alright, let's wrap. 
We're done. I'm going to grab my laptop and bounce because my truck's right there. I gotta tell you guys though, little insider thing. One of my favorite parts doing the fashion show is that we're here late and I can go see what the competition looks like. So, um, okay. Okay, okay. Big and bold with the brand in there. Don't look at any DJs down this way. I always like seeing who all's here, who all's here, who all's here, guys. This is the one thing that's weird, but you'll see like Renault by Anderson and stuff here. Caterer, caterer, city barbecue. I, I spotted another one. I spotted another DJ, let's go. Also, shout out to, if, if any of you guys are the actual DJs, leave it in the comment down below. We got Sound City DJs, we got a Gig Bar 2 TV and some EV speakers that, I'm not sure what EV that is on the bottom. Guys, I wanna point out the biggest thing at this show, right? If you're doing a wedding show, trade show, right here where they have the pipe and drape like this go high height height you see over there the fusion sound lighting booth those are 12 feet in the air look at this do you see anybody else standing out and we got the bistro lights that are not on right now but nobody goes for height except for that one up there and back there in the corner put your branding nice and high i like the georgia expo poles but you can go cheaper there's other options oh wow we got a lot going down this aisle i gotta see what's over here okay 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 paul quartz I heard he's got cold sparks. Where are they at? I was told that there's cold sparks. I don't see any cold sparks unless they told me can't have them because there are regulations here. This is one of the places that does have regulations in place for cold sparks. And the biggest thing with the cold sparks is that you have to have the class D fire extinguisher, which we do, which is why we can use them. Who is this? I like this setup. We got a bun booth. We got the salsa booth over here. Aaron Dewin, couple choice. Southern Entertainment. Been doing it for a few years. 2019, 2022, 2023. Nice, 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 nice. Like it, like it, like it, like it. Yeah, I'd be snooping. Oh, they got the, those are the both lighting tubes. Uh-oh, uh-oh, we got competition. Watch out. I'm just kidding. We're at a position now with our company where we need more DJs in the market to help us keep the high standards that I have for DJing. The more DJs, the better, in my opinion. I want more guys that have high standards. You got another one right here. This is uh, Sky Dreams Entertainment. This is another thing, if you know, other than the first booth we saw, you guys see branding, branding, look at that. Oh my God, it's amazing. We go to these shows and literally both lighting lights everywhere. Those are the IR4s on the back. What else we got? Of course, we have Mr. Spin Fire in the building. A lot of lights, a lot of lights. Who else? I know Dow Oaks is here. I know my boy Eric's here somewhere. They might not even be set up, honestly. Oh, no, there, there, there. See, I don't even have to tell, I don't even have to see branding or anything to know that's Eric's booth, because that's theirs. Look at that. They got a crap load of IR4s, Jackery. What else we got? I think that's it on the DJ side. Good amount of DJs here this year. There's just some insider tips, guys. I've been talking to the guys up in New Jersey. If you guys watch the podcast, John Roach, he killed it in showing it. He was also a DJ collective with his man, Rich. Both of them basically talked about how at these shows, it's all about networking and not about actually being a part of the show. The clients and stuff, that's, that's a bonus. But the biggest thing here is networking. That's why I always go ham. I always go hard when it comes to the booth setup. I go hard when it comes to our main stage setup. Like I want to have the biggest presence possible at these shows. Branding for days. We're gonna have a DJ in there. We're gonna have a DJ over there. Of course, LED signs, hedge walls everywhere. Catch you guys tomorrow for the show. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Let's see this truck started. We're on the way this morning to the Coliseum to do the wedding show. I got the last little bit of stuff I need to bring, the facade, grab my clothes for the day. Got them back there, you know, all hung up, ready to go. So yeah, catch you, catch you when we get there. We're in, had to negotiate all the security protocols and everything to get in here. But uh, yeah, I had to bring back the facade. I got a new facade this year, I haven't shown it on the channel. I ended up buying the Rockville six panel one because it stays together. You don't have to fuck with the damn pins on the ADJ one. I'm gonna go ahead and start turning on everything, getting everything situated and set up. And Hannah should be here shortly. Ralph's coming today. And Lainey's gonna be here too to help out. And then Marcellus is out at Legacy doing a corporate audio event. He just got there as well. And then Shot's got a wedding tomorrow. Busy, busy, busy. How easy is that? I, I only used five, but it's an accordion style. So if you need extra, you can use extra. If you don't need it, you don't need it. Gotta do a little Velcro right here, management. It never comes apart, it's all hinged and everything. Love it, and it comes in black and white, but of course I like the white one, but pretty cool. Wow, hell on earth exploded. Welcome to the day in the life for uh, DJ Rick Webb running a company. So, if we come around here to the back and look, well, videographer, but if we look right here, um, these are the RCF speakers sitting back here. 
not out here. Those are, those are the Icoa tops. Yeah, welcome to the day in life. So, <laughs> well, I haven't been filming because I've been panicking and getting all this shit figured out. I had to run back to the warehouse and grab speakers, but what happened was, well, I don't know what happened. It's not the speaker's fault, 100%. It's something to do with power. It is something to do with power. I ran into a similar situation. All you OGs might remember the VRX subs I had. I blew the internal fuse on those when I first got them, like two gigs in. So here's what happened. Came in today, turned on everything. The RCF on this side over here didn't turn on. I was dumb. Like there's no power switch on these. It's just power in. There's two buttons. It's very simple to use, very professional quality. Like, good stuff it didn't turn on so I took the power cable out of the other one check that I ran direct power it wouldn't turn on I called my boys up a canal sound light and all we can figure out is that the internal fuse is blown up so I was like all right I'll just run with one they're plenty loud anyways so I took the power cable back over there and I plugged that one in and when I plugged that speaker into the Furman there were sparks and that fuse blew so this is me basically saying I don't know what the hell is going on so if you guys have any insight in the comments down below please let me know why this happened. What I can tell you is I have a couple of factors to consider. One is the power at this convention center is very strong. My Furman is reading 128 volts. It is a very strong circuit. 128 volts is what's running and they're two separate power, different power on that side than this side. The only other factor is the fact that I am running cold sparks as well. I have two cold sparks on both sides. Now, typically at an event, I would not do that. Here, we don't really need crazy loud speakers because it's just a little fashion show. It's not anything crazy. We really wouldn't even use these speakers normally. We'd just bring like the 44s and call it done. But we're gonna try out the new speakers. So my only theory is that it's something to do with the firm and power conditioner. So let's, uh, let's go over to the speaker right here. I'll show you. Main power comes into here. This then powers both the speakers and the power goes out and powers two cold sparks. And then the same thing on the other side. Main power comes in, goes over, feeds two cold sparks. Now each one of these is pulling about two to three amps a piece. So that's a six amp load right there on both sides. So my only theory is that I'm getting too big of a voltage drop here and that is what shorted the speakers. It's not an issue when it comes to the speakers, it's an issue when it comes to me and my setup. But right now I'm trying to figure out what was the problem and the only thing I can think the problem was related to is the fact that I also had the cold spark load on the same circuit. So let me know in the comments down below if you guys have also ran into issues with either if you have RCS speakers or ran issues with fuse blowing, but I am pretty confident that it's the Furman power strips. And that sucks because I like the Furman power strips. I think the problem is inside the Furman power strips, the wire gauging inside of there is too small. It's causing too much of a voltage drop, high current spikes, and popping fuses. Because the last time I blew the VRX subs, they were both plugged into a Furman power conditioner as well. I'm probably gonna reevaluate everything I'm doing, but I'm probably gonna go to drop boxes instead of Furman power conditioners, because yeah. I'm either gonna stick to like uh, speaker splitters or get a drop box that I know has actual 14 or 12 gauge wiring inside of it. Wedding show's still going on. Like I said, I'm not entirely sure we're actually gonna keep doing this wedding show, but talk to some really good prospects. We got a prospect that wants to do a crazy lighting design for a bar mitzvah and I'm excited for it because that's what I feed off of. But sucks, but uh, you know, I know we're gonna get the speakers fixed. It's not an issue. Like I talked to my boys at Canal. We're gonna make sure the, the speakers get fixed. We'll use them properly, but yeah, leave down in the comment section down below what do you guys think, but I'm pretty sure it's related to those firm and power conditions. I might open one up and see what kind of wiring is used inside of those, because something's, they should not be doing that. I'll also mention, just so you guys know, all of the cabling, like all the extension cords we're using is all 12 or 14 gauge that's running up here, so we shouldn't have an issue there. And like I said, we're not really drawing much power other than the cold sparks. I guess I didn't show you, but all the lights are up and running now. Tubes are over there, going some crazy stuff. Ralph's in here scratching. This is what we have at the wedding show. We have a nice little thing to fill out. We got okay. some brochures. We got Lainey and Hannah. All our business cards, everything. Ralph over here scratching it up on the gold Rev 7. Little Maui. There you go.
We back at the warehouse. We just unloaded everything up in there. I'm about to move the trailer and truck. Oh, Ralph and the whip! Whip game. I'm gonna go put the trailer away. Let's see what's up with Ralphie boy. Warehouse vibes. It's good though. We bump it in here. We getting everything put away. Away, way. Hey, Hannah. Ah. Boys up here. What are we doing? We making it black? Painting shit, man. Painting shit. <laughs> oh, Chick fil A? Got the Chick fil A? Yeah, Chick -fil -A. <laughs> this dude right here. Literally, Chick fil A every goddamn day. I don't know how he affords it. Hope you guys enjoyed a little bit day in the life. If you guys want me to film more of these, I'll try to pick like maybe a day a week or a day every other week that I have a decent amount of stuff going on to film more day in the life stuff. Let me know. First time doing day in the life recap for you guys. Also, let me know what videos you guys want me to post. What videos you want me to make. I'm like actually scheduling out this year and like having dedicated videos. So we're posting every single week on the channel, maybe twice a week on the channel. It's kind of my goal. And if you guys could uh, smash the like button down below. Oh, update RCF update um we're getting them all fixed a hundred percent the problem was related to the firm and power strips we went through kind of figured this out yeah so if you guys have those firm and power strips honestly uh, i'm about to throw all mine in the garbage and uh we're probably going to make some of our own boxes or just use actual just power splitters or something i'm probably going to make some actual jump boxes have my buddy that makes custom ones with actual dedicated 14 to 12 gauge wiring inside of them not the piece of shit ones that those are so that's just a little feedback for you guys i'm we're getting it taken care of the the guys over at rcf are super easy to work with and get things replaced absolutely perfectly fine under warranty no problems whatsoever but yeah i would 100 percent stay clear of the firm and power strips anyways thank you guys for watching keep the market spinning i will see you guys in the next one like comment subscribe peace